So what's up? It's been a while since I've done a video like this. It's actually been two years since I did a video like this. And I just wanna talk about quickly, you're going to learn some amazing things in this video. In fact, you're gonna learn seven things that will make you a more successful entrepreneur. And when I mean more successful, these are things that I literally had to pry out the cold, dead hands of so many people to learn how to be successful myself. If you know my story, if you've heard it, if you've been on this channel, I came from sleeping on my mother's floor all the way to building my own business and making a ton of money. And now, I'm leaving these videos as a trail for you to make a bunch of money also. So, last year I didn't get a chance to do this video. I did a year, in, I wanted to do a year in review every year. I did it the previous two years, but I didn't get a chance to do it this year. And I'll leave some links below if you want to check that out. But, this year, I'm making up for that by giving you seven things that I learned. So usually I give three at the end of the year, I'm actually giving double that plus one. So if you watch this video to the end, you're gonna learn seven things that are really gonna make you successful. Um, I'm gonna put in all kind of clips from the year, stuff that's been going on. And you're gonna literally see some of the lessons that I promise you if you do them, will make you a ton more money and just build you up as a better person. So I don't wanna take too much of your time in this intro. We're gonna go out to the street right now I'm gonna teach you the seven things you can use to become a more successful entrepreneur. So I'm with P. Higgs right now. We're about to go ahead and shoot the year in review. P. Higgs really didn't get a chance to shoot this on uh, last year because this was pretty much like a rebuild year. So it was like kind of went I mean, dead into it. Days. Yeah, it kind of went dead into it because I remember Thanksgiving last year, we was just getting into all of this shit that we're doing right now. So it was kind of like, hit the ground running. We actually haven't even been able to film like that. So the content kings are back and this is PH one year review. Let's get it. Here are the seven biggest lessons I learned over the past two years that will help you become successful as an entrepreneur. So lesson number one, people accelerate process. You can even put that as an acronym if you want, P-A-P. People accelerate process. Progress, I mean. So I want to tell you a story about a good friend of mine. You actually just saw him in the video, Country Big Checks Cowboy. Now, before I met him, I learned a lot about business. I learned a lot about success. I learned about motivating people. And I even built a moderate level of success for myself. But what I really realized when I met him was that Although I had built all these skills and all these talents, it was so much easier for us to progress because he simply had a lot of people who knew him. One of the things that I admire about him, he said when we first started was that, really, I think people just need to see you. I think people just need to see your content. Now, a lot of people, they sit back and they say to, you, say to me, okay, well, you know, I got all this knowledge and skills, fuck it, I don't need anybody. It's me out here alone, fuck the world. But then I realized taking that attitude really leaves you stranded. You'll be left behind by anybody else who's actually putting a bunch of people together. So if you can assemble a team, true, you might have all the skills, but if you can't assemble a team, it's gonna take you years. If I had to say there's one thing that I think is the biggest accelerator to progress, it would have to be other people. And I want you to remember that. People accelerate progress. I'll give one more example. Another good friend of mine, Justin Perry Reed. You may know him as the e-commerce bully. So this year, we met him towards the end of the year, and he knew all this type of stuff about Google AdWords and advertising and stuff like that. And being around him, just observing those things, rapidly accelerated what I thought I needed to know about advertising and resulted in us making a ton more money. But how different would it be if I hadn't met those two people? So that was just a little interlude. So I guess the second biggest thing that I'll talk about this year is, and this is something me and Country Big Checks Cowboy discover is, have something for sale. And what does that mean? So basically having something for sale means that you need to have a product that people can actually buy or a service or whatever it is. I mean, there's a lot of ways to create values out here, but that's some of the big things you need to have. So let me give you a prime example of this. I remember talking to a good friend of mine. She said she wanted to be a consultant, a business consultant. She wanted to help businesses and brands build up their, their brand, whatever. She wanted to help build businesses up. And the first thing I asked her, I said, okay, what specifically do you sell to these businesses? 
And she was looking at me dumbfounded for a second. And she had no idea how to put it into words. See, here's the funny thing. When I first started getting into business, I did the same thing. In fact, I've told this story before. I got a phone book out and literally did 100 cold calls. 100! Rejection, 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 rejection. Over and over again because, shit, I didn't have anything for sale. I was literally calling up businesses. And if they would have said right there, well, come on, sell me something. I'd have been like, well, shit, I don't even have anything to sell you. Because what was really happening here was I had an idea, I had a vision, and I, had, I focused on all that cool stuff about having my brand, about having my content together, about getting out there, really producing. But at the end of all that, there was nothing for people to actually buy. And this is why most people as entrepreneurs wind up broke because, I mean, think about it. You, you read all these, you watch all these videos on YouTube. And they're like, oh, you know what? Go out there, you know, make sure you have a company vision. Make sure you have all your, your processes together. But they're never telling you the one thing that you need. Like right now, we're walking downtown and you see all these businesses and services around here. And the reason they're able to sell something is because they have a product. I'll give you another great example. Me and my good friend, country, one of my business partners, country, country cowboy, DJ, uh, we created a product this year. And one of the products that we created was to help people grow their Instagram. Now, this one was interesting about this product. When we first put it out, people were actually shitting on the product. I can even say that the product probably wasn't even that good. But this is what happened. Because we at least had something for sale when people came to buy the product, they gave us their complaints. They talked about everything that was wrong with the product. And then what do we do? We turn around and flip that to turn it right back into something that people wanted to buy. Now, a couple months later, people are buying the product every single day. Now, that's because we had something for sale. We can go that way. We can go that way, either way. That's because we had something for sale. And what I want to emphasize here to you is, I don't really care um, what you watch this car right here. So I don't really care how great your vision is. I don't really care about, you know, how good your marketing or branding skills are, how good your graphic design and stuff is. Um, if you don't have something for sale, you're gonna end up being one of these people who is just spinning their wheels, not making much money. And I don't want that for you. I want you to make money. And this is like one of those epiphanies that I had that you should start with the product first. This is what I'm gonna sell. This is your business model. This is how I'm gonna make money. And then from there, you transition that into all the other cool stuff, the marketing and branding. And that's the type of stuff we're gonna release this year so you understand how to do the whole process. But I think this is important. If you have something for sale, at least give people the opportunity in the channel to buy from you. Because otherwise, you're just gonna be over and over again doing shit that it's not really leading you anywhere. So the next big lesson that I learned was don't be afraid to invest money. Oh shit, let me stop for a second. No, I didn't mean that, Kevin. I literally mean, let me stop, pause for a second. I'm gonna say this again because this one is so important. This one is so important to success that I promise that if you're not willing to do this one thing, you might as well not even try to be an entrepreneur. Don't be scared to invest money. So I'll give you a prime example of this. When I first started in business, I used to always try to get over, right? And what I mean by that is I always tried to find the cheapest deal. I tried to find things the cheapest way. I would literally spend hours searching around the internet trying to find something for free instead of just paying for the shit that was right there in front of me. Now, for the longest, I thought, oh yeah, I'm doing really good, right? I'm doing really good because I'm finding a way to save money. I'm trying to find ways to save dollars and stuff like that. What I didn't understand was the time value of money. What do I mean by that? So if I spend six or seven hours scouring the internet, looking over here, looking over here, looking for alternatives and stuff like that, what am I not doing? I'm not spending time growing the business. Now, one of the, one of the reasons that this became very apparent for me, and I'll tell you something simple if you've ever looked at websites, is WordPress. So I remember back in the day, I used to try to build all my websites hand-coded, custom. So what does this mean? I used to spend weeks hand coding a proprietary software just to put a website up. And when people got to the website, I realized they noticed no difference. Yeah, I could get there and explain to them, you know this is custom built, but to be honest, nobody gave a shit if it was custom built. And I just wasted two or three weeks building a website that I could have just got a WordPress back in and built the exact same thing on top of it in a day or two. So really, what was the value of that? What was, what was the value of me wasting all that time doing that when I was just like, shit, I could have just invested some time. I could have invested in something else. But let's take it one step further when, it talks, when we talk about money, because the concept is the exact same. I had another thing that helps us build landing pages. So if you've been into online marketing or if you watch any of our stuff, you'll be familiar with landing pages and sales copy and stuff like that. So I was looking around for free tools in order to build a landing page. And once again, I was wasting a lot of time. 
But then DJ, he came to me and said, look, man, fuck it. Just pay for it, right? And, I, you know, for a second, just my old way of thinking, I was sitting there saying to myself, man, no, nah, we got to save money. And I don't know if we should invest. Or I don't know if we should do that. But then I said, fuck it. You know what? I'm going to pay for it. And what I found was that this, this saved me so much time that I was literally able to get landing pages up in a matter of minutes. And it resulted in us making a ton more money. So this is what I'm telling you. It resulted in us making a ton more money because instead of spending all my time looking around the internet trying to find some type of free solution, I simply just took the shit that was in front of me, paid for it, and used that to make more money in my investment. Here's the real reason. You have to understand how to value your time. So what I mean by valuing your time? Most people have no value of their time. When I mean no value of their time, that means that, oh, okay, well shit, I'll spend 20 hours trying to search for something just to get it for free, but I've just taken 20 hours that I could have been working that's actually gonna generate some money for me. And this is the crazy thing that when I look at all entrepreneurs, they're just not willing to invest the time. Here's the last point I wanna make on this particular lesson that I learned. To me, I think it goes deeper, and I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go a little crazy on this one right now. To me, it goes deeper than just being willing to invest money. It goes deeper to a, a mindset that doesn't allow you to become successful. What I mean by that? If you're not willing to put into the universe, you don't get anything out of the universe. I'm gonna say that again. If you're not willing to put anything into the universe, you don't get anything out of the universe. A crazy concept, right? Crazy idea. But basically what that means is, I believe that it's not so much that when you pay for something that it's the actual thing that you're paying for makes you more successful. It's that willingness to invest. And because you have that willingness to invest, it simply means that you're gonna do what you need to do to be successful. Look, I've been to the point sometimes this year, uh, at the beginning of this year when things were really just trying to get going where I was on my last bit of savings that I had to invest into the business, but I said, you know what, I'm gonna do it. Another good friend of mine, DJ. I mean, we used to put a bunch of money into stuff like ads and stuff like that because he's like, fuck it, let's just invest, invest. And when we invested, we eventually learned the game, ads, advertising, all this type of stuff, which allowed us to make a ton of money. It allowed us to move to a place downtown. It allowed us to do all kind of crazy stuff. But we had to be willing to invest, even when it seemed like we didn't know what was gonna happen, simply because that was what was gonna get us to the next level. So that's one key thing to remember with this lesson, be willing to invest. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is a crazy concept. And this is what I wanna look right into the camera for. Fuck plan B. So what am I talking about here? So I was on my Insta story a while back and I was talking about fuck plan B. And I'm gonna tell you why I feel this way. So I wanna preface it a little bit different than I did on my story with this. To me, this is your life, right? So you see people walking around, I'm going whatever way you go. So you see people walking around all the time, right? And they're talking about, you know, hey, I want to, I want to become successful, right? I want to make a lot of, lot of money. I want to have a life of freedom, right? And you know, I see this all the time and I think to myself, yeah, yeah shit, that sounds amazing. Why don't you go out and do it? But then they say, but I'm gonna have a backup plan. So here's, here's the biggest problem I have with having a backup plan of this nature. See, you're talking about a backup plan to mediocrity. I want you to clearly think about this. So when they were telling me to have a backup plan, they were saying, you know what, go to college, and if it doesn't work out, you can just fall back on your degree. But I didn't want the life that I would have fell back on. So to me, it's not this matter of making more money or less money, anything like that. It's literally a matter of saying, fuck the mediocre life, I'm just gonna make plan A happen. I think so many people go into this entrepreneurship thing like, hey, it, if it doesn't work out, I can do this other thing. But this other thing is gonna keep you miserable. Look, I'll be honest with you. I've, I've got all kind of friends in different backgrounds and stuff like this that are not entrepreneurs. And maybe some of them are happy with their life. But the thing is, most of the time, the 99% of the people I know, they fucking hate their job. They fucking hate their relationship. They fucking hate everything about their life because they chose to take plan B, the safe route. And to me, it's just about going all the way in. Look, if you got a plan A, Right now, if you got a plan A, if you say, I'm gonna be an entrepreneur, I'm gonna be a magician, I'm gonna be a fucking wizard, I don't know what you wanna be. If you say you're gonna do that, to me, there is no plan B. There's only plan A. And once you realize that there is no other option but to succeed at what you're doing, then you'll take an entire different approach to life. Look, for years and years, I got caught up in listening to what society told me I should do to live my life. But really, now that I've, I've looked back on it, I'm like, shit, I'm just gonna go with plan A. So I put everything into plan A. Because if you don't, if you don't do this, I promise you what's gonna happen is the second things get tough, you're gonna get comfortable, you're gonna fall back. 
And I'll give this last example. Uh, when I left school, I put myself in a position that no matter what happens, I really couldn't back out. I mean, think about it. At this point, I put so much content online, so much video out there, stuff like that. Like, if I stopped right now, people would be like, hey, Pete, what happened to this shit? I thought you was an entrepreneur. So it's like, maybe that's a way to use societal pressure to help you. Put yourself, put friends around your stuff to say, you gotta go this way because you're gonna go in there. Put friends around your stuff that are, are gonna keep you accountable, right? So I got all these friends, I got all this stuff around me that, that help, keeps me accountable. So right now, if you can keep yourself accountable, use all that social pressure. That's a good way to use social pressure to keep you accountable. But that's one key thing I want you to remember is fuck, fuck the plan B shit, fuck all that, man. Just decide that you're going to make this way successful. Decide to make more money. Decide to make more money. Okay, so the next one I want to talk about, which is huge, is invest in some social skills. Now, you may say, oh, can I do that? Can I really invest in some social skills? Now, somebody else, if you've been watching the channel or you've been watching a lot of our content in the last year, you may have been introduced to a new character, DJ, aka Country Big Checks Cowboy, right? And one of the things that I always tell people to observe him is because he will admit right now, he will admit to you right now, he's like, look, man, I can't even fucking read that good. I don't have a bunch of skills, technical skills and stuff like that. Look, I can't even fucking read that good. And I don't even have any fucking technical skills like most people say that they need. And even though he says all of this, right, he still is very successful and makes a ton of money. Trust me, I know, right? But why is this? What, what, is, what is the factor here? So I heard this the other day. They said most people who are at the low end or they go to college or something like that, they, they invest in skill set, not mindset, right? And social, being social is a mindset. I always tell this story of Henry Ford. I won't even tell it here again because I've said it on so many platforms, but I will say this, right? Um, think about people you like, right? Who do you buy from? Do you buy from the people you, people you hate? I'm pretty sure there's a computer program or somebody you know that probably has a lot of skills or talent, engineer or something like that who has a lot of talent. But they're absolutely terrible people to be around because they have no social skills. Meanwhile, there's the person that walks in the party and like, hey, what's up? Hey, what's up, man? Good to see you. Everybody's clapping their hand. They walk in the building. Everybody, he lights up a room. She lights up a room. And you're like, how the fuck is this person so successful? It just seems like just to defy all logic, like how did they become successful? And I'll tell you the real key is because they invest in social skills. Now you may be thinking to yourself, oh, you know, social skills, this is not something that can be grown. You have to have some type of God-given talent. Um, but I can assure you that social skills are definitely something that you can cultivate. Um, we can wait on this train really quick, right? So I guarantee you that social skills are definitely something you can cultivate. And the reason I know this is because I'll tell you honestly, I'm a very shy, very introverted person. And this was something that I cultivated in myself. I was like, you know, um, I need to get more social. I need to get out there. I need to start meeting people. And I talked about this before on my channel. I think it was like one of the first videos I did for the Massive Action Movement show. I talked about this and I was like, hey, you know, social skills. Um, I went out to clubs and nightclubs and bars and I was just cold approaching people, cold approaching women, cold approaching people just to learn my social skills and get my social skills up. Now, the point you may say, oh, okay, this is just some foolish club shit. But really what it came down to, it got me out of my comfort zone and it, it taught me the ideas of how to socialize with people. So now I'm sitting in a situation where I'm going into business meetings and all kinds of different social situations and I can just go talk to these people and get these people to like me. I learned all this type of stuff about um, social psychology. Um, when you talk to people, how to be open. I read all kinds of books on it. And I just went out there and practiced the skill. So I want you to think about it like this. Let's say you have the greatest idea that could possibly ever be conceived in the world. I mean, this idea is so fucking good that anybody who hears it will buy. But you cannot bring yourself to talk to another person. I mean, it just cripples you at the thought of socializing with people. But let's take a guy. Let's take a girl. Take anybody. Mediocre. Trash idea. Maybe one in 6,000 people will buy it. And that's if they're crazy. But they are willing to socialize and they get themselves in front of billions of people. Who do you think is going to be more successful? Like, really think about that. That's really what social skills are. Uh, one of the things I've learned from Instagram and growing people's Instagrams and stuff like that is that uh, really it's not the person who has the most skills, the talent that wins. I heard this amazing idea. It's about the idea of product quality, right? So we spend so much time a lot of times as entrepreneurs, and if you're like me, meticulously trying to create a better product, a better product, a better product. 
But when we went to research all these products that are making millions of dollars, a lot of times we found that the product quality is not that good. Because honestly, we buy the marketing. And social skills are just marketing, right? What makes one person really better than the other one? You might say it's the way they look, it's the way they sound, all this shit. But really what it comes down to, it's the general energy or the vibe that they're able to put out into the world that makes people want to come into their world. The reason I tell you to observe people like, say, uh, DJ, a country big checks cowboy, is because that's a person it's not so much he's going to teach you something, unless you go to Social Palooza, he'll definitely teach you in there. But it's not so much he's going to teach you something. I want you to observe the general vibe. I want you to look at people that you admire and observe the general vibe. What makes you so addicted to their content? Because they're putting out social skills. I literally, and you can see this on my channel, I've talked about this before, each year I do a year in review. I literally went and started talking in front of people on camera. Like a lot of people look at this and say, this is a bit awkward. You see people walking around, people in the background. But it's a social skill, right? I learned to public speak because I understood if I could get on a camera and speak, I would be able to talk to people and make more money. It's just simple as that. So the thing is, if you want to really look at one skill that I've learned over the past two years that has been invaluable to becoming successful, invest in some social skills. I don't care what you got to do. If you have to take a Toastmasters class to learn public speaking or not, well, join a Toastmasters group. If you have to go out there and do crazy stuff like go take any speaking engagement you can get. Um, if you have to get your friends and start organizing little events, whatever you have to do, get those social skills out. If you want to do something like I did and go out there and start talking to people in the club and cold approaching people in the club, then do that. Because I can promise you this, and this is green, so this is like, <laughs> this is like dangerous, but I can promise you this, right? If you invest in some social skills, and you see what I'm doing right now, if you invest in some social skills, this is going to be the fastest accelerator to your success that could possibly happen. And this is why I'm so adamant about you really investing in this. So next one I wanna talk about is riding trends. Now this is a huge one that I think a lot of people talk about, even big time business people talk about that. So let's, let's observe what the trend is first. The trend is basically just something that the mass populace is beginning to adopt, right? So one big trend right now is veganism. My brother um, actually have a family owned restaurant down the street called Indiana's Southern Vegan Kitchen which basically takes like Cajun food and uh, makes it vegan. It actually tastes amazing. If you're not into vegan, you probably should try it. But here's the thing, that's a trend. Veganism has become huge in the last couple of years because people think just because you're a vegan, you're gonna be healthy. I literally had one girl tell me, she said, you know, if you're a vegan, you can't be fat. But I promise you, there are a lot of fat vegans because it's just calories. But I'm not gonna get into that, right? But the thing is this, that is a trend that you have to ride. Well, what's another amazing trend? And this is one that me, <laughs> we, me and my boy Country Big Chase Cowboy took advantage of, which was Instagram, right? Social media. So in the world of social media, everybody wants to be famous. Everybody wants to be a star. Everybody wants to grow their accounts. What do you think you could sell at a time like this? Well, something to help people grow their accounts. So we invested heavily, heavily this year into creating softwares and creating all kinds of proprietary things that we could use to help people grow their Instagrams. Now, I heard this amazing quote. I actually messed it up. On, um, on the podcast. It was the wrong year. But in 1849, they had the gold rush. And they said, in the gold rush, don't fucking go mining for gold, right? Don't be one of the thousand people out there mining for gold. Go sell shovels. Now, why is that? In the gold mine, when, in the gold rush, rather, when everybody was out there trying to get rich, mining for gold, you know who was raking it up? The person who was selling fucking shovels. And that's how we looked at it, right? Yeah, of course, I'm growing my Instagram every day. Of course, I'm doing all that. But I'll tell you what else I'm doing. I'm helping other people do that because guess what? It's a gold mine and I'm just gonna sell the shovel. Now I tell this story because I want to talk about what it means to ride a trend. All the best entrepreneurs of all time are observant. You need to observe a trend that's going on around, around you right now. So one thing we always talk about is one thing, what, I'm, what I love about having DJ on board the team is he goes around and analyzes social media and new platforms and stuff like that that we should invest in. For example, I don't know what this platform will do, but I definitely know that uh, this new platform that's emerging called TikTok could be something that is powerful in the future. And I'm definitely gonna invest some time into that. Even if it doesn't become a big platform, it's worth investing. Same thing like Snapchat. He always talks about adding like Snapchat to the, the ad platform because a lot of people don't, they sleep on Snapchat and it's an excellent driver of traffic. Now, the reason I say this type of stuff is because what I've noticed with most entrepreneurs when it comes to success is they don't have the ability to ride trends, right? So right now, video content is huge. So if video content is huge, and you know that video content allows you to continue selling and selling and selling, don't you think you should invest in some video content? 
maybe go get your camera at least. Invest in learning a little bit about video editing and production. So you can use this same thing in your business. That seems like it'd be the logical thing to do. But you'd be surprised how many people can't catch this trend. I can tell you that videos have made us so much money simply because when people see content like this, like, okay, think about it like this. I'll make it simple for you. Think about it like this. If you're watching a video right now, if you came to a page and it's just, a, it's just some text on the page and it's like, hey, buy my product now. Versus somebody who's charismatic, who gets on there and says, hey, this is why you should buy my product. And this is this, this is how I built this up. And it's all this amazing video content. Who do you think is more likely to get the purchase? Like I said before, it's not like what I was talking about social skills before. It's not always the person who has the best product who gets the sale. So video, if you can put that oil sheen on it, that's what we call it. It's like, you ever been somewhere and you see somebody, it's like, it, it looks dull, but then they just put that nice sheen on top of it. If you can't put that oil sheen on top of it, then you're missing a large trend. Look, content is the king, king right now, right? If you're creating content, if you're creating more content than your competitors, you're just in people's faces more. And that's what I realized. It's like, you have to learn to ride the trends. Like for example, there was a Bitcoin trend. So a lot of people made a lot of money off Bitcoin because what did they do? They simply, they simply took that trend and said, okay, I'm gonna make a course. And then people bought the course. Millions of people bought these courses about Bitcoin and how to invest in Bitcoin because this person rolled the trend. I don't know if they're still making money off it. A good friend of mine, he made a half a million dollars on Bitcoin because he was able to catch a trend. Well, I don't know what it's doing now. You know, Bitcoin fluctuates, it goes up and down. But the point I'm getting at is not the fact that, um, it's not the fact that, it's not the fact that, that you um, have to do something special, but you have to observe these trends. And if you don't want to pay attention to what trends are going on in the world, well, I can promise you, you're going to fall behind because this is the one thing that big entrepreneurs do. Um, another good friend of mine, the e-commerce bully, Justin Perry Reed, he talked about this. Um, so there was this big trend with CBD oil, which has to do with like marijuana. I believe marijuana, right? Yeah, okay. So, you know, that's becoming legalized in a bunch of states. And whatever your opinions are, it doesn't fucking matter to me. The point I'm saying is that he saw a, tra a trend in the CBD, uh, the CBD industry. So he starts selling CBD oils and CBD strips. And that ended up making him millions of dollars because he rolled a trend. He saw the influencer marketing was powerful and he went and got influencers because, you know, these ad platforms don't let you advertise things like marijuana, tobacco, alcohol, and stuff like that. So he used that as another trend that he saw that these influencers that are getting on Instagram, another reason to have a great Instagram, are powerful influencers and you can just do these partnership deals with them and make a ton of money. So what we're seeing here is that the people who become successful in this world are emerging as the people who ride trends. And I can tell you, um, out of everybody I've seen, even Warren Buffett says this, if you're able to ride trends, if you're able to take time to see patterns and observe trends, I promise you, that's when you're gonna see yourself making a ton of money because you're gonna be a person who says, oh, this is becoming exciting. What can I do to provide value to people to ride this trend? And I can tell you, everybody I've seen do this makes a ton of money. <laughs> right. That's he's all, he's all. Yeah. <laughs> he said, we done yeah, here, yeah. Folks. Somebody just said on on the site, I don't have enough income though. I just want to say this in the video, I'm just throwing this in here. I decided to stop looking for affordable things and just decided to make more money. That's not mine. That's actually country big chest cowboy, but I love the quote. Alright, let's get into this last one. And this is a big one. This one's really heartfelt to me. You ready for this one? Don't try to make people you don't know fuck with what you're doing. Just find people who appreciate what you're doing. Okay. So, I don't know if you're going into the bushes or not. Anyway, here it is. So, I was talking to this girl the other day, and she was saying, you know, my friends, they don't understand me. My friends, they, they don't get it. I'm trying to be on business. They're always partying, they're bullshitting. They're not really taking this serious, but I'm really serious about being an entrepreneur. And I said, you know, a great thing that DJ always says, well, we always talk about this, everybody talks about this. I think we said this a long time ago on a video I did about creating a positive ecosystem or your own mental habitat. But people belong in boxes, right? So if you're an organized person, you know things go in a box, right? Maybe you got a box for your underwear, maybe you got a box for your pants, maybe you got a box for your shirts, right? You got these different boxes. And you love all these things, right? But they all have their function or their purpose. So it's important to put people in certain boxes. So one thing I learned, and this was an amazing book called Tribes, it was talking about how um, when you're building successful organizations, tribes have different levels. 
And so level one would be like the lowest level where people think the world sucks. So it goes like this. Level one, if I can remember it. Level one is I suck and the world sucks. So people in this tribe are like, these are like these dangerous cults, people who shoot up schools, all kind of low level shit, right? This is at the very lowest level. But then you move up to a level two organization, which is more like um, the world, the world's okay, uh, but my life sucks, right? So this is like, they say, if you go to say one of those um, temp agencies, employee temp agencies, or you go to, go to a call center maybe, like these people hate their fucking life, but they think that other people are living these amazing lights, lives that are just outside their reach. Well, then you move up from there and you get to level three. And level three is interesting because level three is where I sat for the longest, which is I'm great and everybody else sucks. I wanna pause for a second here and tell you why this is so important to understand. See, the person at level three thinks that Everybody can't do it. Nobody else is valuable. Only my knowledge is important. And they find themselves stagnated. But what they really want deep down is that recognition. They want people to recognize them as being great. They want people to recognize them as being a great leader. They want people to, to give them admiration for their skills and their talent. But they find themselves never getting it because they're stuck at level three. But here's the craziest thing. You move up to level four, right? They say usually level three gets stuck at level three until they find a group of people who really appreciate their talents. Then you finally move up to level four, which is our, we're great, so the team, we're great, but everybody else sucks. So there's actually one level higher. I'll just say it for the video, and I'll get back to my point. The highest level is we're great and everybody else is great. So it's like we're doing our thing, everybody else is doing our thing, we just love life, we love the world. And that's the highest level organizations. These are the people who change the world. They change everything. And that's what we strive to always be is the highest level organization. But I will say this, once I got around people who actually appreciated what I was doing, it wasn't difficult for me to get people to work. It's like, I literally have friends out here with me filming or I'll have friends going to do business stuff with me because I just found a group of people who appreciated what I already was doing. But what did I do with those other friends? I didn't say, fuck those friends, kick them to the corner. I didn't say that. I said, oh, I'm just gonna put you in a box, right? And what is that box? Okay, when I go out and turn up and have fun, this is the box that you're in. If I'm over here just wanting to blow off some time and talk about some crazy other shit that's outside the norm of reality, then I'll talk to you. But when I want to talk about these concepts, and sometimes they overlap, right? These are the people I have to do it with. I have to put people in boxes. And I think so much time is spent on us trying to find people or trying to force our friends that we grew up with, because of course, we already talked about this before. I would love it if it was my friends that grew up with me to be right here beside me doing a video with me, but it doesn't turn out that way. I mean, you, you know what I'm talking about, right? You've seen your friends that have been like, okay, yeah, shit. Um, you start talking about some business, or you start trying to move up, maybe you get into some self-help, self-development, and they're just not really fucking with it. I mean, that was pretty much my existence for a long time. That happened to me so many times. But then when I got around people, that actually appreciated what I was talking about. It was like night and day. These people were up for what I was talking about. These people were ready to do it. And um, we built amazing things together. But a lot of times you're just scared to take that first step to tell your friends, look, I'm on something different. I'm gonna go out there, once again, socialize with other people and meet people who are into the things I'm into. And I promise you, you can build some amazing things together. So that right there was seven lessons that I learned. Seven lessons that I learned, I believe that was seven, I hope it was seven. <laughs> I believe that was seven lessons I learned about becoming successful. Now, I wanna give this little sign off before I go and say this. Um, the reason I didn't get a chance to do this last year is because I was deep in the back, back of every type of platform about making money that you possibly could think about, right? I was learning about ad managers, I was learning about building monetary systems, business models, and all this stuff, all this crazy stuff, because in 28, no, 2019, I was about to say the wrong year. In 2019, my goal is to really go deeper into my vision of helping you create a future in your control, where you're in control. And in fact, one of the biggest projects that we're working on right now is how to start a business in 30 days. Yes. This is basically taking all the knowledge, not just from me, it's me and my inner circle. We're putting our knowledge together. We're compiling it. I'm talking about friends who have done business with billionaires. We're talking about friends who have mastered social media. People who've made tons of money, hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars, bringing all that knowledge into one place to teach you about business. Look, I know what it's like. The reason I leave these videos or I make these messages is because I know how fucking difficult it is to do business, especially if you have no leadership or anybody you can relate to who's come from nothing. Look, 
I do this, I tell people all the time, even, even to the recommendation of so many people that I should delete a lot of my old content, I don't do it because I want to leave this as a record for you to understand that I came from nothing and I just kept learning, kept learning, taking lessons and building. And if you use these lessons right here, you can do some similar things in your life. And I've already talked about that the main thing you have to do is take massive action. I actually think that was my 2015 year in review. I talked about you have to take massive action to be successful. But I do want you, if you haven't, to go to howtostartabusinessin30days.com. You can sign up for that email list and get on there if you want to learn some of the things that will help you start a business in 30 days. I mean, this is literally going to be a game changer. This year in 2019, we're going to do bigger shit than ever been done before. You're going to see us all the time. You're going to see new faces. You're going to see new content. You're going to see all kinds of things coming back. And I can promise you, this year in 2018, I keep I want to say 2019 for some reason. This year in 2018, we were quiet. Even if you've been watching, you might be like, no, nah, I feel like I was, no, 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 trust me. We were quiet. But in 2019, we're going to show you what it really means to create a future where you're in control. So with that being said, hope you enjoyed this year in review. Um, look out next year for this. And then keep watching this channel. Subscribe to this channel because we're going to be bringing so much content. I've got like eight videos that I haven't released yet. You'll be able to see the progression as my mindset changes. And then, of course, I'm going to be releasing all new content this year that's going to help you be successful you can watch my journey you can watch my friend's journey and we're going to show you how to really do this shit like we're we're going to do that um besides that i got to get out of here go down there hit the subscribe button hit turn the notifications on so you can see when new videos are coming out and besides that keep taking action massive action movement i'm gone